Hi kids, so first, I'm so sorry for being out. Um, I was very sick and now my son is very sick. So what I'd like to first do is kind of review 4.5 and I wanna add um, two little tiny things that weren't in the book but that you really all need to know also. So in 4.5, we talked about a transversal which basically is a line that intersects two or more lines. So I've got two lines here. If I draw a line that intersects them, that line is called the transversal. And what happens when we intersect two or more lines, we get eight or more angles. So I'm going to quickly um, label the angles with just some numbers so we can quickly refer to them. Okay, so there were a couple of types of angle pairs that we talked about. Um, the first was alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles would be like angles 3 and 4. I'm sorry, 3 and 6. Those would be alternate interior angles. Another pair of alternate interior angles would be 4 and 5. Okay. We also have alternate exterior angles. These are outside of the two lines in the exterior region. An example of alternate exterior angles would be 1 and 8. And another pair of alternate exterior angles would be 2 and 7. So alternate means on different sides of the transversal. Interior means within this region. Exterior means above or below the two lines. Then we have corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are basically angles that are in the same position but at different intersections. We've got two intersections. We've got this intersection and this intersection. So some corresponding angles would be like angles one and five. They're both in the upper left corner. Another pair of corresponding angles would be angles two and six. Another pair would be four and eight. The last pair would be three and seven. So there's four pairs of corresponding angles. Now something new that I'd like for you to add to your 4.5 notes if you have room, if not, just kind of squeeze it in somewhere, are same side interior angles and same side exterior angles. It's a lot like alternate interior and alternate exterior. Alternate interior, we're on different sides of the transversal. Same side interior are on the same side of the transversal, still within the interior. So if I'm looking at this interior section, Angles that would be on the same side, interior, would be like 3 and 5. That's one pair. Another pair would be 4 and 6. Same side exterior are going to be above or below, or depending on how your two lines are oriented, um, outside of those two lines. So an example of same side exterior would be like 1 and 7, there's a pair, or 2 and 8. So please make sure to add those to your notes. Now let's take a look at 5.2. So we're going to be skipping 5.1. 5.2 is entitled Proving That Lines Are Parallel, and we are going to use these special angle pairs to do that. Our essential question is how can I use angle pairs to prove that two lines cut by a transversal are parallel? During these notes, especially because I'm not there, please write any questions that you have in that left column so you can remember to ask me when I see you again on Tuesday. Okay, first let's begin by looking at some relationships of some of the angles in a triangle. A triangle has three interior angles, which means inside the triangle there are three angles. There's also something called an exterior angle. If we extend a side of the triangle, then that extension along with the side that it's adjacent to creates an angle, and this is called an exterior angle because it's outside of our triangle. Okay, there's a relationship between an exterior angle and its remote interior angles. Remote is a word that means far away. 
So if I look at the three interior angles, there are two remote interior angles. That would be this one and this one. And these are considered remote because they are not directly adjacent to that exterior angle like this angle over here is. Okay. So for purposes of being easy to understand, I'm going to go ahead and label these angles with some numbers. We'll call this angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the theorem, and then you can go ahead and write it down. The theorem says that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle, which means the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 2, or I could say the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 3. Both of these are true. Now if you were to see a problem like this, probably instead of 1, 2, and 3, you're going to have expressions that represent the measures of those angles. So if it asks you to find the restrictions on x, you're going to set up an inequality. You're just going to replace the measure of angle 1 or 2 or 3 with its expression. You might want to also add that these angles have to be greater than 0. And then you would go ahead and solve that inequality for the restrictions on x. So here is the theorem written out. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle, which we've just stated with our picture. So the point of this section is to prove that lines are parallel, and we can do that through some of our special angle pairs. So let's, let's consider that we've got two lines cut by a transversal like you see. If the alternate interior angles happen to be congruent, for example, this angle is congruent to that angle, or this angle is congruent to this angle, then we have parallel lines. So if alternate interior angles are congruent, then we've got parallel lines, parallel lines. And I would show that with these little arrows on my picture. Okay? Similarly, if, I'll do, I'll pick another color, if our alternate exterior angles are congruent, just one pair is all you need. So let's say this pair is congruent to that pair, or that, those two, that pair is congruent, <laughs> excuse me. Or let's say this angle is congruent to that angle. Then we've got parallel lines. Now let's consider another type of angle pair. What about our corresponding angles? So our corresponding angles would be like this angle and this angle. If those are congruent, we've got parallel lines. Or let's look at another pair of corresponding angles. Let's say if this angle and this angle are congruent, we've got parallel lines. Or let's say this pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then we've got parallel lines. Or maybe the last pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then we've got parallel lines. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then we've got parallel lines. Now notice with these three types of angle pairs, the two and the pair must be congruent. If you could show that somehow through your algebra, remember we're not using proofs anymore, then you could say, yes, these angles are parallel. If you can show that they are not congruent, then you have shown that they are not parallel. Let's look at some of the other angle pairs, the ones I add, had you add. For example, we've got same side interior and same side exterior. 
Now these aren't going to be congruent. In this case, they're going to be supplementary. So let's say this same side interior pair, if they, if these two angles add up to 180, then that means these two lines are parallel. Or if we look at our other pair of same side interior, if we can show that these two angles add up to 180, then those two lines are parallel. The same is also true about same side exterior. If I can show that these two angles are supplementary, they add up to 180, then those two lines are parallel. Or if I could show that these two same side exterior angles are supplementary, then our lines are parallel. So we'll just put those kind of together. Same side interior angles or exterior angles. If they are supplementary, then that means our lines are also parallel. In this case, with this type of angle pair, either interior or exterior same side, we must be showing that they are supplementary, that they add to 180. So that's kind of how you would set up your equation using the algebra. If you can show that, then you can say those two lines are parallel. And then conversely, if you can show that they are not supplementary, then you can prove that they are not parallel. The last way you can show that lines are parallel is if you have two lines that are both perpendicular to a third line. So I've got this line and this line. They're both perpendicular with this third line. Then that means those two lines are parallel. They've got to be. So here are the problems that you're going to do for 5.2. We will do these in class on Tuesday. You don't need to do them unless you just want to get ahead. Um, but let me tell you real quick about number 26. On 26, it says you might need to use the quadratic formula. So I'm just going to kind of remind you all what that is. You're going to get to the point. There's going to be a quadratic. You're going to get to the point where you've got something like this. Okay, this capital A, capital B, and capital C, these just represent numbers, but these will just be the coefficients of these terms. But you're going to get something like this. You're going to try to factor it, and it's not going to factor. So in that case, you've got to use the quadratic formula, which goes like this. The value of x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. That b, that a, and that c are just these coefficients, these capital A, B, and C. We just convert them to lowercase letters. But what you're going to do is you're going to plug those in, and if you don't remember from Algebra 1, you're going to evaluate it twice. Once using a plus right here, and then you're going to evaluate a second time using a minus right there. And that's how you're going to get your two values of x. So give that a try on 26. Work together um, in class on Tuesday. If you're working alone, you could look it up on the Internet. And um, go ahead and watch the 5.3 video.